So guys, we are going to discuss today study unit 10. It is study unit 10 and the name of chapter is supply chain management. And in this chapter, we have the following topics. We have one topic is called just in time inventory and lean resource management. It's a theoretical topic. Second topic, we have 10.2, which is called enterprise resource planning and Outsourcing, it is also a theoretical topic. Then we have a third topic, which is called theory of constraint and throughput costing. It has some calculations. And the fourth topic is capacity management. So in this class, I'll discuss today uh, some interesting part, which is what theory of constraint, because this is the most important topic. And in next class, we will finish all remaining theoretical topics from this chapter. Understood? So here we go. Please remember guys, as we know from unit number seven till unit number 11, like all these five chapters, seven, eight, nine, 10 and 11, this is called your cost management section. Okay, and this is in total your 15% of exam. So let's start unit 10 we are discussing. Out of unit 10, we are going to talk about what? 10.3, which is called theory of constraint. Understood? So So this is 10.3 here, guys. So topic name is Theory of Constraints and Throughput Costing. So let me first give you overview of this topic and then we will go through what your book are, your notes, uh, what is written in the notes. Guys, remember here, first word is what? Constraint. Constraint means to say obstacles are bottleneck resource. Actually, here we are mainly talking about bottleneck resource. Which resource? Bottleneck. What are bottleneck resource? Bottleneck resource is also called scare resources scarce resources we can also use the word sometimes you know uh, what is scarce resources scarce resources means say sometimes we have a limited resources you might have a limited machine hours you might have a limited labor hours you might have a limited production facility understood so you might have a limited capacity of the machine so in the theory of constraint, we are going to manage these constraints first. Okay, and how we will manage? Let me give you first example, and then we will go through the steps. For example, guys, I am manufacturing two products, product A and product B. Guys, please switch off your mics. We are manufacturing two products, product A and product B. For example, Product A is making profit, let's assume $30, just assume. And pro product B is making profit, for example, $60, let's assume. And we have a total hours, available hours, total hours, available, available. For example, let's assume 30,000 hours. So far, I'm just assuming. I'm assuming product A also need 30,000 hours. Product B also need how many hours? 30,000 hours. But 30,000 hours are limited. You cannot extend it so far in the short run. Only this, this is capacity for you. Now tell me, because A also requires how many hours? 30,000. B also requires how many hours? 30,000. Tell me on which product you, you want to utilize these limited hours. On product A or B? On product B. By default, why? Why product B? The reason is that product B is more profitable. Understood? Product B is more profitable. So this is what is the idea. So whenever you have a limited resource, whenever you have a limited resource, those resources are called bottleneck resource and those resources we want to manage in an effective way. And how we can manage those resources in an effective way? We can manage in only one way. The way is if you will utilize your limited resource first on that product, which is highly profitable product. And if you have anything left, for example, you have some spare hours left, then you can utilize those spare hours on 
second highest profitable product. So this is what is the idea, but how you will work that I will explain now. So guys, please remember theory of constraint. It's also called what? Throughput costing. Okay. Throughput costing is also called super variable costing. What word I'm using? Super variable cost. It's not a variable costing. Super variable. Understood? It's super variable costing. Please remember here. So what is the point here? So throughput accounting or costing anywhere you can use. Throughput, throughput accounting, what is the aims of this theory? which is also called theory of constraint. The aim of this theory is to make the best use of scarce resources. Scarce resources also called what? Bottleneck resources. And how you will make the best use of, as I told you, first you will utilize these resources on highest profitable product. Okay. And this throughput accounting, we apply in which environment? JIT environment. JIT means to say just in time environment like this is actually one philosophy just in time in which we don't store inventory no we just order the inventory at the needed time whenever it is needed to avoid unnecessary storage cost so theory of constraint uh, is applicable in which environment in just in time environment just point just you have to remember second is called guys the aim of throughput accounting or throughput costing is to maximize this measure of what? Profitability. Sometimes they will ask you the question, what is the purpose of throughput accounting or theory of constraints? So you would say the purpose is to maximize the profit. And how you will maximize the profit? As I told you, if you will utilize first limited resource first on highest profitable product, ultimately you are working on profit maximization. Understood? This is the objective. They, they ask sometimes this question, what is the objective? So objective is what? Objective is the profit maximization. Now, here, as I told you, what is the objective of the uh, theory of constraint? Maximum. Profit maximization. Um, profit maximization. Understood? Now, now please need concentration. What is our objective? Our objective is to maximize profit. But when you want to maximize profit, what we face, we might face some bottleneck resource. Bottleneck resource is also called what? Constraints. We might face some constraint. And now what constraints you might face? Constraints could be given with the name of what? You might have a limited labor hours. You might have a what? Limited machine hours. You might have a limited material quantity even. So you might have a some parts of the process, like of the production process, slowest part. Like maybe you are utilizing three machines to manufacture a product, machine one, machine two, and machine three. Maybe machine one or two is the slowest. It has slow, less capacity than other machines. So these are the examples of what? Bottleneck resource. And note, what is note? We can maximize the profit by, by managing the constraint. And I told you how you will manage the constraint. First, you will utilize the constraint on first on highest profitable product and then on second highest profitable product and so on. Understood? In short term, please remember, if you have any limiting factor in short term, so how we can maximize the profit? We have to, we have to utilize the resources in best way. So this is what is written in, in the short term. The best use should be made of this bottleneck. But in the long term, in the long term, just the best use is not the solution. In the long run, you have to remove or overcome that bottleneck resource. That I'll tell you how you will do it. So here we go now. What are the main assumptions of this topic? Topic will be very easy. Don't worry. Once I start explaining calculation and the process which we will use to maximize the profit, it will become very easy. It's just the theoretical points I'm explaining. So don't forget what, what is the main point? What is the assumption? Sorry, what is the purpose? What is the purpose? Profit maximization. How you will maximize? By managing the constraint. And should, you should utilize constraint first on highly profitable product. That's it. This is what these two points you need to remember. Right points are what? You need to remember like which types of constraints are there. It could be limited hours, machine hours, labor hours, fluest part of the production process, or it could be material quantity hours. 
Now guys here, please remember here, the, what are the main assumption? The main assumption of this topic is, they are saying, this is theory of constraint. I'm not explaining anything from my side because this theory was given by two people. Okay, Jeff Cox and Ali Goldratt. Okay, in 1986. So we are, whatever we will study, we will study as per their theory. Don't think so anything I'm telling you from my side. Don't we need to memorize the names also? Yeah, no, no, names are not required. So here, what are the main assumptions of this theory? Theory assumption is what? The, as per this theory, mostly when you manufacture the product, guys, we incur these costs. Which cost? Cost of material. We incur the cost of labor. We incur the cost of overheads, like other expenses also. As per this theory, we are saying that the only and the pure variable cost, pure variable cost is only which one is the material cost is the variable cost. Even nowadays, fixed cost, labor cost is also fixed. Why? At least maybe sometimes we hire the labor on monthly salary, right or wrong? Sometimes we even on weekly salary, it could be there. So most of the time, labor cost is also fixed. And overhead cost, most of the time, it is also what? Fixed. Understood? So what is the first assumption? Now these points are written here. Assumption number one. The only totally variable cost in the short term is the purchase cost of raw material. In simple words, raw material is the variable cost only. Understood? Number two. Direct labor costs are not variable in the short term. What's the reason many employees are salaried and even if paid a rate per unit, if you're paying maybe on per unit basis, still are usually guaranteed a minimum weekly wage. We are giving them guarantee of minimum weekly wage. Number three, given these assumptions, throughput is effectively the same as contribution. Actually, this word we need to understand now. From today to onward, so from today to onward, we will have two definition of contribution. Understood? One definition of contribution is written here under which costing? Mm -hmm. Under variable costing, which is called marginal costing. Understood? In And second, we have a contribution definition. Okay, that is called which contribution? Throughput contribution. This is called what? Contribution margin. This is called what? Who put contribution, make the difference in your mind. Who put contribution, it's also contribution, it's also profit. But this profit is as per which theory? Theory of constraint. Understood? It is also called throughput costing. It is also called what? Super variable costing. Like as per throughput costing, theory of constraint or super variable costing, we have one definition of throughput contribution. And as per variable costing, which is also called marginal costing, we have another definition of contribution, margin. Okay, here we go. Guys, under variable costing, first I'm talking about this side. Under which costing? Variable costing. So contribution margin, this is how we calculate. We will always take sale price per unit. If you want to calculate contribution margin per unit, we'll take what? Sale price of one unit. And we will deduct here what? All variable cost. And as per marginal costing, material cost is also variable. Labor is also variable. And variable overhead is also variable. And you might have other variable cost also. Other means like selling cost, like salesman commission, etc. So what is the point to be noted here? So once we'll take sales, sales value less minus what? All variable cost, all, even it belongs to production or it belongs to non-production. But if it is variable, you have to subtract to arrive at what? To arrive at contribution margin. But as per theory of constraint or throughput costing or super variable costing. So throughput contribution is equals to what? Sale value minus what? What is minus? Only material cost because as per assumption of throughput costing the only variable cost is which one is the material cost is the variable cost on so here you will deduct only which cost material cost this will give you what contribution margin 
Understood? Now, please remember, please remember, as per theory of constraint, whatever I'm explaining, I'm explaining as per theory of constraint. If you have any doubts in your mind, you can ask them. Huh? So I'm just explaining what they said. So here what? Note, in theory of constraint, we assume material cost is the only variable cost, which I told you, and all other costs, all other costs, means it could be a labor cost, overhead cost, all other costs are treated as fixed, including labor and overhead cost. And fixed cost is also called factory cost here. Understood? So point, what you point you have to keep in your mind? We have a two definitions for contribution, right? One as per variable costing and second as per super variable cost. Understood and remember how it will be calculated. Please, guys, because in exam question, sometime we have to use contribution margin in exam question. Sometime we have to use this throughput contribution. <laughs> I'll tell you when, don't worry. So, but our objective is what is to maximize profits. Now, when you are maximizing profits, by managing the constraint. Constraint first you have to utilize on highly profitable product. Don't forget this point. This is the only crucial point. Understood at that time what we will do guys. So we will follow these five steps. Number one, to maximize the profit as per theory of constraint. How many steps are there? Five steps are there. Step number one is what? Step number one is what? identify the constraint. You have to identify the constraint. It requires some calculation, I'll show you. Step number two is what? Determine the most profitable product mix. Product mix means to say, product mix means to say product combination you have to create. You have to make product combination, production plan, like how many units you will make up for the product A or product B or the product C. Okay, so we will determine the most prof profitable product mix given the constraint. At constraint, you have to create production plan. Like this limiting hours, where you will utilize first, where you will utilize second. This is also calculation, I'll show you. Step number three is what? Maximize the flow through the constraint, it is theory. Step number four, increase the capacity at the constraint, it is also theory, but it's kind of management. Number five, redesign the manufacturing process for greater flexibility and speed. So we'll, we'll see now. So let's start with the step number one first. And here are the uh, gold rat and Cox names are written for the authors of this theory. Step number one, we are going to do. It might have a question in your exam also. What was the step number one? How to identify the constraint. It's very simple idea. Whenever you want to identify the constraint, for example, I want to see, do we have labor as a limited hours or material as a limited quantity or machine hours we have as a limited resource? So what I'll do, I'll do only two things. I will take resource available from the question how many resources are available and I will compare with the required resources for any X, Y, Z production. Understood? What I'll do? I'll take how much available resources? For example, available hours are 10,000, assume. Available hours are how much? 10,000 hours. Required are how much? 12,000 hours. It means you are short with the 2,000 hours. It means these hours are constrained for you. Understood? For example, another scenario. Let's assume resource available are 10,000 hours, but you need only 2,000 hours now. It means you have 8,000 surplus hours. It's not a constraint. Constraint will be only in one scenario. When required resources are greater than available resources. This is only the constraint. Understood? This statement I can write this way also. When available resources are less than what? Required resources. I'm saying same thing. Understood? So this is called your what? Constraint. Clear? So how you will identify? So let me show you with calculations. But I'll do only these two things. What I'll do? 
I'll take only required resources and I'll compare with the available resources. And I'll see required, uh, required are more or less. If required are more, so then it is constraint. If required are less than available, then it is not a constraint. But I have to maximize property at the constraint. Don't forget this one. Understood? So here we go. Let's have a look. This is how data will be given in your exam questions. You have to just see. So it's written here. Don't worry. If resources available are greater than required, it's not a constraint. If resources available are less than required, it is a constraint, as I told you earlier. So here we have an example how you will do it. So in your exam question, guys, here straight away data is available. In your exam question, he will tell you stories. He will tell you we have ABC company. And ABC company is manufacturing two product, product A and product B. And demand in units per product A is how many units? 1,000. Per product B is how many units? 2,000 respectively. You will write these statements. Then we'll tell you, for example, material per finished product. Like if you want to complete unit A or unit B for each completed unit, how many kg of it we need? We need 3 kg per product A to complete it. And we need 2 kg per product B to complete it. Then it will tell you machine hours per finished product. Like to complete product A, we need how many hours? 2 hours. To complete product B, we need how many hours? 3 hours. Understood? Then he will tell you, for example, <coughs> other information is given. For example, we have a material cost is, let's assume, $6 per kg. Then they are telling you total machine hours available, how much? 6,000. And total material quantity available is how much? 10,000 kg. And you have to identify the constraint, which is our step number one. Understood? So how you will do it? Because you have two things available are given here. Machine hours and what? Material quantity. So I'll, I'm doing first here, simple. I'll take what? I'll take required, uh, or I can write here first, available resources. And I'll compare with what? With the required resources. Understood? If available resources are less than required, this will be only the constraint constraint. Understood? For example, let's do the cal calculation for first. Let's try first for machine hours. I'll write it here, machine hours. Available machine hours, how much? 6,000 hours. And now I want to compare with what? With the required hours. How you will calculate required? You know you are manufacturing two products. You are manufacturing product A and each unit uh, and product A demand is how much? 1,000. And each unit will take how many hours? Two hours. Two hours. What I'll do for A, I'll take 1,000 units. Multiply by how many hours for each unit? Two hours. It, it requires 2,000. Plus, I'll do for the B also. For B, what is the units? Output, 2,000. And each unit take how many hours? Three hours. I'll multiply. It will give me how much? 6,000. So, total required how much? 8,000 hours. Understood? Now tell me available is how much? Six. Available is six. So it means this is a this is a constraint. I'm just going to tick box. It's a constraint. Now we can same we can try on. We can try on what? On material quantity. Understood? Material quantity I'm trying now. For material. Okay, how much material quantity is available? Available is 10,000 kg. I'll compare with the required for product A and product B. Understood for product A, how many units we are producing? 1,000 each unit needs how many kg? Three, so we'll take 1,000 into three kg. It will give you 3,000 kg. For product B, how, how I will do? We have to manufacture unit 2,000 units. Each unit takes how many hours? Or how many kg? Two kg. Right or wrong? It's given here. So 2000 into 2 kg. It will give you how many kg? 4000 kg. So total kgs are how much? Required 7000. But available is how much? 10,000. So it is not a constraint. It's not a constraint. 
So now once constraint is identified, now every next calculation we have to do at the constraint. Now forget about material. Material is not a constraint. Constraint is what? Is your machine hours. So this is the step number one. This is how you will identify the constraint. Understood? So step number two. What was step number two? This calculation is done here also in the sheet. Okay, it's done for, for material and for machine hours. It's only your secretary, no? But I have uh, written through the pen there. Okay, these things. Step number two. Step number two. Determine the most profitable product mix given the constraint. Actually, guys, here, please. I can divide this step in two different sub steps. So, like when you are calculating your most profitable product mix, actually, you have to calculate production plan. So, in step number two, first you need to prepare what? Production plan. Production plan means to say how many units of product A or product B you will produce at the constraint. If, if they're asking you to calculate total contribution. So what do you have to do? First, you have to prepare the production plan. Then you can calculate the total contribution. If they're asking you to calculate the total profit, total profit, profit, profit will say from contribution will deduct fixed cost. Okay, so again, we have to do what? First, we have to prepare production plan. If it's asking you to calculate profit, first you have to prepare production plan. Then you have to prepare total calculate total contribution, then you can calculate the total profit. This will be the sequence we will follow under step number two. What sequence we will follow in step number two? First, production plan, then total contribution, then total profit we can calculate. Understood how it is going to work? Don't worry, it is very easy. So for example, again here, we are using the data from what? Previous example. In previous example, just we are assuming now with additional information. Some information I'm using from there. If you remember, output was 1,000 units for per book A, 2,000 units for product B, same data is used it here. Okay, but here we have some additional information. Step two. For step two, we are preparing production plan. But before production plan, I'll write one thing here. You have to do the ranking first. What do you have to do? Ranking. Ranking means say you have to decide first which product is highly profitable. Where you want to utilize first limited resources. That the high or low profitable product you will get through the ranking. It means now remember the sequence. First ranking, then production plan, then total contribution, and then one, then total profits. And how you will do ranking first, I'm going to tell you a ranking. It's written here. Firstly, we will rank the product. Then we will prepare the production schedule. Understood? And these are the things. This is how you will do it. For example, you might have a three products in the question, four products in the question, two products in the question. So we have a two products, product A and B. If you have a three, you will write it here. C, if you have four, you will write it here. D, number of column will increase. Understood? And you will follow the same format. First of all, we'll write the sale price per unit. What? Sale price per unit, which will be given in the question. You don't need to assume where it is assumed, but you will be provided. Sale price per unit, for example, for product A is $70. For product B is $80. From here, guys, we'll deduct what? We'll deduct variable cost. Please remember here. It's a very important point. If in exam he's asking you that you have to calculate contribution margin, what? Contribution margin. It means it is variable costing, not super variable costing. Because in super variable costing, it is called throughput contribution. If in exam he told you you have to calculate what? Contribution margin. So contribution margin, then you will deduct here then you will deduct here all variable cost. Which cost? All. All means material, labor, variable overhead, and all others. Whatever variable cost. 
But if he is asking, you have to maximize what? Throughput contribution. Then here you will deduct here. In variable cost, you will deduct only material cost. Do you remember? You remember I told you? And earlier, as per theory of constraint, only variable cost is material. But under other variable costing, whatever variable cost are there, material, labor, all you will deduct. Understood? So remember these two words. If he is asking you to calculate what? For example, contribution margin. It means then you have to deduct here what? All variable cost. If he is asking you to maximize throughput contribution, then you will deduct here only which cost? Only material cost. But I am talking about, I told you the note, we will do the question similar like that. But so far, I am deducting only material as a variable cost. Understood? Because I'm pure, purely I'm following the theory of constraint. Understood? So first of all, what you will write, guys? You will write the products. Then you will write what? Sale price per unit, which will be given in the question. From there, you will deduct what? Variable cost. All variable or all the material depending upon you are calculating contribution margin or throughput contribution. Understood? So I'm calculating throughput contribution, for example. So for example, I'm assuming only variable cost is what? Material. material is the only variable cost. And do you remember, I have to direct here now material cost of product A and B. Just go back to the question. Some data we are using from this example. Do you remember product A, how many kgs they are consuming? Mm -hmm. And what is the rate per each kg? $6. It means for product A, material cost is how much? 18. Product B, how many kg it requires? 2. What is the rate? 6. It will be what? 12. So this is what is material cost is deducted here. 18 and 12. Understood for product A, how many kgs we require? 3. What was the rate? $6 per kg, so it's 18. For product B, 2 kgs are required for one finished product. What is the rate? $6, it is 12. So now, once you will deduct sale, less variable cost, which I'm assuming only material here, this is called throughput contribution margin per unit. Understood? 52. Actually, this is the step number one under second stage. Step number one is what? Because uh, overall we are discussing second step, you know, production plan we are preparing. A production plan, what is the first sub step? We have to calculate what? Throughput, contribution per unit. How you will get? Sale price less variable cost. You will get what? Throughput, contribution, margin per unit. Now, guys, once you got per unit, please don't rank your product. Don't rank your product based on only throughput margin. No. You have to convert this profit, which is the per unit profit. Which is which profit? Per unit. Per unit we have to convert to per constraint. For example, if constraints are hours, as in, in my example, machine hours are constraint. So I will convert this profit to per machine hour. If constraint is material, material, kg, so I will convert this profit to per kg. How I will convert? Very simple. Once, once, once. Contribution per unit is calculated. After that, simply you will divide. Simply you will divide this contribution per unit. You will divide with what? Constraint per unit constraint could be machine hours. So if it is machine hours, you will divide your machine hours per unit. Constraint could be labor hours. If it is labor hours, you will divide your labor hours per unit. Constraint could be material. So then you will divide your kg per unit. Understood? So that's a written constraint per unit. Why it's, I have written your machine hours? Because in my example, machine hours are the constraint. So that is why machine hours per unit I have to divide. So, you know, product A is taking how many hours? Two hours. It's from the above example. And product B is taking how many hours? Three. So, what I'll do once I'll take, once I'll take contribution per unit divided by machine hours per unit, contribution per unit divided by machine hours per unit. This is called what? Contribution or throughput contribution. Throughput contribution per 
मशीन आवर आर पर कॉन्स्ट्रेंट कन्वर्टेड यस सो हेयर यू गॉट हाउ मेनी डॉलर ट्वेंटी सिक्स डॉलर पर आवर हेयर यू गॉट हाउ मच ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सेवन डॉलर पर आवर नाउ टेल मी हेयर यू विल डिसाइड दिस इज सेकेंड सब स्टेप इट मीन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट वॉट यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट थ्रू गुड और कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन पर यूनिट देन यू विल वॉट डिवाइड यू विल डिवाइड विद वॉट कॉन्स्ट्रेंट पर यूनिट यू विल गेट वॉट contribution per constraint right based on this based on contribution per constraint you will rank the product tell me now in per hours it means it means product a is making 26 dollar per hour as a contribution or profit product b is making how many 22.7 dollar per hour it means what should be your first ranking product a should be first and product b should be second see if you will rank based on this profit per unit per unit then what will be your ranking this will be first this will be second but don't rank it's totally wrong you have to rank based on what based on contribution margin per constraint you have to rank understood understood guys Yes. What I said. So now, okay, ranking is done. Ranking is so this same as it. You have to memorize format actually. You have to memorize this format. Right for sale price, then deduct what variable cost. You will get contribution per unit. Then divide with the constraint per unit. Okay, so you will get contribution per constraint, and then you will rank. Once this literally for video of your money, once ranking is done, now we can note is written here. What is note? We can maximize the profit if we utilize the constraint. Constraints are what machine, machine hours. It will utilize the machine hours first on which product? Machine. Why? Because product A is on the first rank, and then on the product B. If any spare hours you have, note if company if company is using what variable costing variable, so we will subtract all variable cost to get the contribution right. I told you if company is using what theory of constant, we will subtract only material cost. I told you right. The super constant. Super variable. Now we have a production schedule. Don't forget. You do you remember from the question above? I need your concentration from the question above itself. Okay. This example. What is your constraint? What was your constraint? Constraint was machine hours, right? How many machine hours are available? Because now only every thing will be done on constraint. So just pick these units, thousand, two thousand, and pick these hours. Don't pick kgs now, because you have to pre prepare production plan on machine hours. That is the relevant data. And total available machine hours how much? Don't forget. What is per unit machine hours for product A? Two hours for product B. Three hours for product A. Total unit how much? One thousand for product B. Total unit is how much? Two thousand. Total machine hours available. Six thousand. This data I need now. Your machine hours are the constraint. Understood? So production plan. How I will prepare? Here is the production plan now. Here is the production schedule. First of all, you will write here product as per ranking. As per ranking. So I wrote it. We have our first product. Product A. We have a second product. Product B. Understood. Okay. Then we'll we'll second column will make for what demand. Demand. Okay. Third column we will make what constraint. Constraints are what machine hours per unit. And then I'll get what total hours. Total hours how I will get obviously I will multiply units. Which is demand with the time per unit. 
If I'll multiply, I, you will get total hours. And in the total hours, I wrote it at the last, below the total, 6,000 hours are available. I cannot utilize more than that. Understood? This 6,000 from where I got? From the question, because this is the constraint. Total machine hours are 6,000. That I wrote it here. Now I'll start working with it. First of all, I will, I will try to first fill this column first. Professor, how do you get the 1,300 from the demand field? So first we will write it here, constraint per unit. Constraint per unit for product is how many hours? Machine hours per unit, three. Now guys, we'll start working with this. So I wrote this thing in the format, this thing in the format, or this thing in the format. That's what I have to find out now. So let's see. If I write a full demand of product A, which is how much? 1,000. So each unit taking how many hours? Two hours. It means total 2,000 hours are required for product A. a. Product A is done. Demand is fully satisfied. Understood? Now here I have, if I, you, do you remember? For product, product B, how many hours, units we have? If I take 2,000 times 3, it will be here how much? 6,000. No, so total will become 8. No, what I can do here, I have total available how much? 6,000. Out of 6,000, if 2,000 hours are available, are utilized on product A, many we have? 4,000, which I'll write it here as a balance. And this time order, I already know. 3 hours per unit. Now what I'll do, if I am moving from this side to this side, I was multiplying. I was multiplying, like for example, demand times constraint per unit. But now I want to move from, because balance hours are 4,000 and time per hour is three hours, time per unit. I want to get this value. So what I'll do, I will divide. I will divide now. How I will divide? 4,000 hours divided by how many? Three hours. So you will get as a balance production, 1,333. So this is your production plan. Production plan is what? This is your production plan. What? You will produce 1,000 units of product A and 1,333 units of product B. Understood? This is the production plan is ready. Sometimes you will ask in the question only to prepare production plan, like how many units you will produce for product A or for product B. Understood? So ranking is done, production schedule is done. Now what next? Please listen, I need your concentration. If he's asking you, if he's asking you to calculate total contribution, you know, ranking, production schedule, total contribution and total profit. If he's asking you to calculate total contribution, first what do you have to do? Ranking, ranking is already done. Second, what do you have to do? Production plan. Production plan is already prepared. So it means now I can calculate what total contribution. How you will get total contribution? I have total hours already. I will multiply this, this total hours. I can multiply with what? I can multiply with contribution per hour and this you have already calculated. Here you have calculated here. This is contribution per hour. How much? 26 for product A. 22.7 for product B, so I pick 26, multiply by 26, and here it was 22.7 for B. So this will give me what? Total contribution. For example, 2000 times 26, it will be how much? 50, $2,000. So 4000 times this, can how much? Multiply, please help me. With the calculator, please. 4,000 times 22.7. So this will give you total contribution. Now, can you add these two values? 142. One? This is your total contribution. Done? If you want to calculate total profit now, total profit now. So what you will do from here, you will deduct. This is your total contribution from all product, right? Total 
contribution from all product. From here, I'll deduct what all fixed cost. Fixed cost includes what? Labor as per theory of constraint. Overheads, all fixed cost I'll deduct. So this will give you what? Net profit or operating profit and value can be. Understood? This is how you will work with the calculation side. Don't worry, I'll do the question with you. First, we have we are done till this. Understood? So now this is easy. There is nothing. You have learned two calculations so far. How to identify the constraint. Second calculation, you have learned how to rank the product. Third, how to prepare the production schedule. And then obviously contribution is easy and profit is also easy. Understood? Now, let me show you income statement here. Please remember, income statement, this is a, just remember the format here, income statement. Variable cost, I'm not explaining because I already explained when we studied because those who are listening me first time or attending first time, they will be confused. So remember this, super variable costing income statement format. And you have to memorize this format. The reason, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the reason is that because some question you will, you have to solve by using this approach in exam. So what is the format you have to write always first? You will write first sales. sales. Sales, you know, you will take unit sold time selling price. Then you will write it here what? This section is for cost of goods sold. So you will write it here what? Beginning inventory plus what? Which cost? Direct material cost. It's equal to what? Don't write your labor and overhead. No, only material cost you will write under cost of goods sold section. Then you will, it is equal to goods available for sale. Then you will deduct here what? Ending inventory. And you know, please guys remember, ending inventory value, how you will get under super variable costing. You will take, I'm calculating which value? Ending inventory value. Under which? Under theory of constraint. So you will take what? Unsold units are called ending inventory, right? Which are not sold. Multiply by only material cost per unit. Because material is the only product cost as per super variable costing. Understood? What we will take? Don't forget. Don't take it light, light also. Because you will do this mistake. When you want to calculate ending inventory value, as per theory of constraint, what do you have to know? You have to know first, unsold units multiply by only material cost per unit. So this will give you ending inventory value. Understood? Clear? So you will detect here ending inventory. I told you how you will get ending inventory. Okay, this is assumed value. So this will give you what? Super variable, like what opening inventory plus material cost minus Ending inventory, this will give you super variable cost of goods sold. From, from sale, once I'll deduct cost of goods sold, this is called what? Why throughput? Because we deducted only material cost, by the way. This is called what? Throughput? Is what is called? Throughput margin. From there, I'll deduct all other costs now. From throughput margin. Because all other costs we treat as fixed cost like labor all other costs overheads so we'll deduct all and you will get what you will get operating profit or operating loss understood how do we calculate unsold unit you need to know this member the formula i'll show you the question unsold unit multiplied by material cost per unit don't take labor cost per unit over and over only material cost per unit you will multiply with the unsold so that this will give you ending inventory value so, so that will be given but... yeah obviously data will be given but we have to work that i'll work understood so two steps are completed because <laughs> if i will keep explaining you will forget after some time so let's do some questions first okay and then i'll explain some theoretical area understood so don't forget this format huh? so i'm going to show you question first I'll come back to theoretical area. We have a first question on your screen. 
and i would request you please read this question guys Here we have a question now. During the first month of operations, a company manufactured how many units? Okay. This is manufactured of finished goods, incurring 100,000 of material, 75,000 of labor, and 125,000 of manufacturing. During the month, company sold how many units? 8,000 units. For what? 60 each. This is sale. What is company throughput contribution margin? Now, if you will look at the option, it means you have to calculate throughput contribution margin. You don't need to rank, etc. Just because you have only one product, not multi-product. Understood? So you have to calculate throughput contribution margin only you have to calculate. And contribution margin definition, you remember? We'll take what? We'll take, we'll take sales minus material cost. Right or wrong? Okay, now there are different ways to get it. First, I'm going to tell you long way. Long way is what? First, I will write sales. How many units I, I have sold? Into 60, it will give you 480,000. I'll deduct what? Cost of goods sold. Long way, I'm telling you first time. Then, if I tell you long way first, what I told you, then I tell you shortcut. Cost of goods sold, what was the question? Opening inventory. We don't have any information about opening inventory in the question. Plus, I told you which cost? Material cost, which is given here, how much? 100,000. And I'll deduct what? Closing inventory. You do, do you remember I told you closing inventory formula is what? I told you we'll take what? Unsold unit into material cost per unsold unit is how much? You produced how much? You sold. So remaining are how much? Unsold. Multiply by material cost per unit. How you will get? Material cost total was how much? 100,000. Divided by units produced. Divided what unit? Produced, which is what? 10,000. So you will get per unit material cost. Agreed or not? It will give you how much? $10. So 2,000 times. 2,000 times 10, it will be how much? 20,000 as a closing inventory. Understood? So how much cost of goods sold you will get? Opening plus material minus, yeah, how much? 80,000. Understood? Sir, can I repeat for the closing inventory? We need unsold unit. Unsold units are how much? 2,000. You understood from how you got? Now you have to multiply with the material cost per unit. But this material cost, 100,000 is total material cost. Convert into per unit. How? Just take total divided by number of units. Number of units take units produced. Not sold. Because material cost included in production. Understood? Divide by unit produced. So you will get per unit cost as 10. 10 times 2,000, it will give you what? 20,000. Understood? Now 100 minus 20, you got what? 80. This is cost of goods sold. Deduct from sale. This will be your con throughput contribution. Throughput contribution. How much? 400,000. So which is correct option? A. Now shortcut way. You understood long, long way? Shortcut way is what? Very simple. Shortcut way I'm telling you. Always take what? Always take sale price per unit minus material cost per unit because I'm talking about throughput. If it is contribution margin, I will deduct all variable cost. But it is throughput contribution. I'll deduct only which cost? Only material cost per unit. Sale price per unit is how much? 60. Material cost per unit is how much? 10. How I got? 100,000 divide, divided by 10,000. It's a 10. So this will give you throughput contribution, right? Per unit how much? 50. And multiply with the unit sold. It is 50. Multiply with the unit sold. Unit sold is how much? 8,000. Just multiply with the sold unit. Because profit you will get on sold units. Understood? So multiply with the sold, you will get again how much total profit? 
total contribution will be how much? Four hundred thousand. This equation, okay. What you have done? Sale price per unit minus variable cost per unit, whatever it is, equals what? Contribution per unit multiplied by unit sold. You will reach to directly contribution, total contribution. This is shortcut, right? Understood? See, these ways you need to learn through the practice. Now, one more question I'm showing you here. This theory, you can do it by yourself. Now we have a fact pattern here. Another question, it's a bit long question. It has been a long question. So would you please uh, read this question, guys? I'm reading the question now. Always try to read the requirement first, as I told you. So guys, first of all, due to plant renovation, laser will limit limited to 1 million machine hours. This is constraint. 1 million machine hours. What is maximum amount of what? Is it throughput contribution or contribution margin? Contribution margin, it means you are using variable costing now, not super variable. Right or wrong? So now let's read the question. They say laser industries produces two products, crates and trunks. Per unit selling price, cost and resource utilization for these pro products are as follows. It's all data is per unit. Understood? For example, you have a per unit selling price, direct material, direct labor, variable, overheads, variable, selling cost. So all these are variable cost by the way. Understood? And we are, we are given with what? Machine hours per unit. Because machine hours are constrained. Per unit how much? Two hours and four hours. Then next two is there. Production of crates and trunks involves joint process and use of the same facilities. They're saying from same facilities you're manufacturing these products. Total fixed factory overhead cost is how much? This is fixed cost. I don't need fixed because we have to start question at contribution on. Total fixed selling administration cost, it's also irrelevant because we have to calculate contribution. Production and sales are scheduled how much? 5,000 crates and what? 700,000 francs. Laser has normal capacity. Obviously, we have a limited hours. You cannot produce these all units. <clears throat> Laser has normal capacity to produce what? Total how many units? 2 million units in any combination of crates and francs. And it maintains no direct material work in process, no finished goods. But what capacity you have, that is another story. But right now, you have what? 1 million machine hours available. So what I'll do quickly, I'll follow my way. We can do quickly, very simply. So first of all, I'll take a, I'll follow the format sale price minus what all variable cost. Why? Because I'm calculating what contribution margin per unit I get. So we have a two products C and what T sale price how much 20, 30 do quickly. Can you guys add these all variable cost? 8 plus 5, 13, 16, 17, right? Contribution per unit will be a 3. What about this? 22. Contribution per unit will be what? 8. So I divide quickly because I have limited hours, what? Machine hours. I will divide this. Right or wrong? Divided by machine hours per unit. For C, how many hours? 2 hours. For a T how much? 4 hours. So I'll get what? I'll get contribution per machine hour, which is constraint. So it is 3 over 2. It is $1.5 per hour. And it is how much? $2 per hour, which is best. This is first priority, right? Trunk is the first priority. We'll make quickly schedule now. What's the problem? Production schedule, then I can move to the contribution. Right or wrong? So what I'll do, I'll write the product. Product. Then I'll write it here, units. Then I'll write it here, machine hours per unit. And I will get what? 
I'll get total hours. Understood? It's a bit long, but you have to learn. If you will be in the practice, you can do it very quickly on calculator even. So I have total hours available. How many hours? One million. And you know for the trunks, what is the demand is given? Because trunks, we have to make prepare first. Trunks demand is how much? 700,000 is given here, right? I take 700,000 trunks. 700,000. And for trunks, what is time per unit? Four hours is given here, see? Given here time per unit. It's time per unit, guys. Machine hours per unit. Four. Understood? I'll multiply with the four. If I'll multiply with the four, how much it is? It is 2.8 million. It is how much? 2.8 million. It means I cannot produce all 700,000 units. Agreed? Because I have available only how much? One. So what I have to do, I will write it here. One million hours because this is what I have total available. And I need to remove this. And here I have to calculate balance value now. I'll go back. 1 million hours divided by 4. I'll get what? 250,000 units. Understood? 250,000. This is the production plan. And now, how many hours? 1,000. What is per hour profit? 2 dollars. If I multiply with the contribution per hour, which is 2, I can get total contribution, right? I can get what total? Contribution how much? 1,000. It will be 2 million. Actually, this is what he is asking. I can do directly, guys. You know what is the shortcut way? Now you want to know shortcut way? This you don't need to calculate units. 250,000 Khali Valley. We don't need this 250,000. Once you know this product is this product is highly profitable. $2 per hour is there. And you know this whole 1 million is going to utilize on product P. So what I'll do directly, I can take 1 million times 2, which will be give me total profits. Understood? I'm saying that when we know that only 1 million hours are available and 700,000 units cannot be produced whole, it means less than 700, like 250,000 units you have to produce. You don't need to calculate these units also. Once you will realize, once you will in practice, you will automatically you will realize these things. So we'll take 1 million is the total hours that are available, which is whole units, whole hours are going to utilize on trunks. Trunks. So I'll take these hours directly with this what? 2 hours per dollar, per 2 dollar per hour is the contribution. Total profit will be what? 2 million. You don't need to show this working back, etc. Understood? <coughs> this other way also I can tell you. But it's enough. Unnecessary story. <laughs> Understood? So 2 million is the total contribution, guys. Which is the answer? D is the answer. Understood? So now I'm going to tell you step 3 and 4. And then class is going to over. These steps requires some clarification some discussion for that I have to create one example. Okay. I'm creating one example just to understand. So understand step three. Okay. For example, you are manufacturing a product A and product A has to pass through two different machines. For example, first it will pass through machine one. Then from machine one, it will go to the machine two and then product A will be ready. Understood? Okay, machine one is having a capacity of 900 kilogram per day or per hour, whatever you can assume. Machine two is having a capacity of how much? 1000 kilogram per hour. Just understand. Tell me which is the bottleneck resource here, machine one or two? One. Because one is having less capacity. Less capacity is also resource, uh, scarce resource. One is bottleneck resource. Now try to understand what I'm saying. What if I will here, I'm making one column injection of material. Injection of material. If I will inject 1000 kg of material. Or let me change the scenario here. Let me write it here. 1000 kg because then it will be easy to understand. Let me write it here. 900 kg. Now which is the bottleneck resource? 
Machine two is the bottleneck because it has it is the slowest part of the process. Now, if I will inject, guys, for example, one thousand kg, what will happen as a material? Machine one can process one thousand kg, right? Understood. But for machine two, can process only how much? Nine hundred kg. It means here one hundred kg has to sit and wait for processing. It means here will be what inventory build up, right? Remember this point. In theory of constraint, ideal inventory level is zero because we apply in jet system. Do you remember? Yes. We apply in just in time system. That's why inventory build up is not required. We have to keep inventory build up as zero. If I'm just creating scenario, if you will inject thousand kg, there is inventory build up, right? Now this is problem. Now what you are going to do? You are thinking, no, no, no. I will inject nine hundred kg. Second scenario. So machine one can process nine hundred kg, right? Machine two can also be process nine hundred kg, right? But what is the problem here? Now, now tell me. Now machine one is underutilized. Mm -hmm. Right around because it has a capacity of thousand. So that is why this is very practical. Sometimes you are you try to fix one problem, other problem is arise. But step number three is what? Step three, let me explain now. Step three is saying maximize the flow through the constraint. Maximize the flow through the constraint. And here three words you have to remember. One word is called drum. Second word is called buffer. Third word is called row. They are saying manage. Follow this way to manage the constraint. Drum is what? Drum itself a bottleneck resource. Like in my example, machine two was bottleneck resource. The drum is what? The beat to which production process marches is the bottleneck operation. As I told you, drum it's identify the bottleneck resource in the cross production process, which is the bottleneck resource. That is called what? Drum. Drum. The constraint sets the pace for the entire. You know, as I told you, if you will inject 1000 kg, 100 kg will be inventory build up. So you entire, you then to avoid inventory build up, you have to inject 900 kg equal to the drum. Understood? To avoid inventory build up. So drum is what? Bottleneck resource. I'm using one word. Drum, bottleneck resource. What is buffer? Buffer means a minimal amount of work in process, like minimal injection into the drum that is maintained to ensure that it is always in operation. Tell me how much injection you should give 900 kg. I told you, if you will give 900 kg, it will always in the process. That is called, that is called buffer. What is drum? Bottleneck resource. What is buffer? Injection equal to the drum or equal to the constraint. That is called what? Buffer. Rope. Rope is what? Obviously, guys, rope simply it's like a coordination. For example, if 1000 kg you will inject, machine one will process, but machine two can process only 900 kg. 100 kg will be the inventory build up. So, to avoid inventory build up, so these two departments, two machines, they need to coordinate with each other. Don't release material more than my capacity. Understood? Otherwise, we need storage things, kind of thing. So, that is called the rope. Rope is what? Is the sequence of activities preceding and including the bottleneck operation that must be coordinated to avoid inventory buildup. It's a theoretical like identify drum that is the bottleneck resource, give injection equal to the drum that is buffer and coordinate to avoid inventory buildup that is called what? Rope. Theory, right? But I told you one point, very important point. I said, if you will try to manage one problem, Another problem will arise. Right or wrong? This is happening actually practically. It's like you, it's like our life. We are never free of problem, right? Even if you don't have a money, you are worried for that. If you have a look, money, enough money to spend, then you will have another tension in your mind. You will never be tension-free person. It's the same in the companies. If you will try to fix one problem, other problem will arise. Understood? Now I'm telling you what they are saying that. Okay. Now please understand what I'm saying. It's really important point. They are saying, okay, look at the point here. What I said, I said, if I want to, 
if I will inject now, understand this now. If I will inject 900 kg, machine one will process, machine two will also process. But what is the problem here? Machine two is under utilized. Another problem arising now. I'm thinking how I can fix this problem. Then I thought, oh no worry, I'll what I'll do, I'll replace machine two. I'll replace machine two. This is step number actually four. Increase the capacity at constraint. So what I thought. I'm going to buy a new machine. That's it. So I bought a new machine. I bought a new machine, but that machine is having a capacity of 1,300 kg. Now, what will be the problem? Machine one will become bottleneck resource. Now, step you have to, because if you have increased the capacity at the constraint, still problem is not solved. Then you have only one solution. Redesign the entire production process which requires huge capital investment that is the step number five okay if you have increased the capacity it's not fixed another problem is arising because you bought a new machine at the place of machine two now it is more efficient than machine one machine one will become constrained so fix that we have to do what redesign redesign the manufacturing process okay guys if you have a question, you can ask me. Otherwise, thank you so much.